Hello everyone. Uh, let us discuss CBT. Now, first question: All are the flexors of the elbow joint except. So we know that the biceps brachialis and the brachioradialis are the flexors of the elbow joint. In fact, brachioradialis will do the uh, flexion in the semi-prone position, but teres minor is not the flexor. It is uh, basically uh, lateral rotator. Okay, it is the lateral rotator. So. <coughs> Next question: The following is true of the brachial plexus. Cervical rib involves lateral cord. That is wrong because it involves the medial cord. Musculocutaneous nerve arises from the medial cord. Rather, it comes from the lateral cord. Radial nerve arises from the posterior cord. Is the true statement? As we know, it is a branch from the posterior cord only. Post fix does not come from C4. Rather, T2 is added. Right. So next question. Let us talk about this artery present in the anatomical snuff box. Straightforward answer is radial artery. Let me show you the diagram. And in this diagram, what we can see that uh, here we have abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis making one boundary. The other boundary is made by the extensor pollicis longus, and this is the content that is the radial artery. And in the roof, we have the cephalic vein and the superficial branch of the radial nerve. that superficial branch of the radial nerve if it gets compressed then there will be nerve compression features will be there like uh, uh, you see the paresthesia numbness etc this is called as chiralgia and there is similar condition happening in the outer thigh that is called as myralgia so the nerve for chiralgia superficial branch of the radial nerve and the nerve for myralgia is lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh okay so that's about the snuff box now the deep branch of the ulnar nerve will supply all except let me tell you the ulnar nerve is the like it is having the territory the palm is the territory for the ulnar nerve right and in the palm we have only few muscles supplied by the uh, median nerve rest all are supplied by the ulnar nerve so what muscles are supplied by the median nerve median nerve will supply median nerve will supply these muscles that is uh, abductor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis brevis and opponens pollicis opponens pollicis uh, flexor pollicis brevis only superficial part because the deep head of flexor pollicis brevis will be again supplied by the ulnar nerve and along with these three muscles we have lumbrical 1 and lumbrical 2 these are the five muscles supplied by uh, you can say median nerve rest all will be supplied by the ulnar nerve so that's why answer will be c next question 43 year old woman came for the abscess drainage in the posterior triangle of neck and then uh, you see the five days later she could not extend the uh, hand above the head that means overhead abduction is gone overhead abduction is done by trapezius plus serratus anterior working together so let us discuss the anatomy behind it we can see in the posterior triangle we have this nerve that is the genuine content over here spinal accessory nerve uh, it is going to supply the trapezius as well as sternocleidomastoid but when you are cutting the nerve here because of you see you try to drain the abscess over here but by mistake the nerve was cut so the trapezius is paralyzed here and that is the one of, that is the cause in this case for the patient to not able to, to not be able to uh, do the overhead abduction right so answer will be c cut to spinal part of accessory nerve uh, that is what can explain the condition a uh, next question posterior interventricular artery is a branch of what piva is a branch of right coronary artery and in fact if you see uh, this is piva this is how you can say we are looking at posterior aspect of the heart this is left circumflex artery this is right coronary artery in the posterior segment and this is piva mostly piva is branch of right coronary but sometimes as variation it can happen so that right coronary is short of length and the left circumflex is coming up to this much part in this case piva will be branch of left coronary and another possibility is there that this both arteries they have reached up to this uh, junction and then piva is given and then piva is given by both so it is codominance it is codominance so basically we can say that uh, piva mostly is a branch of right coronary artery 
Now following uh, are the boundaries of the coach triangle except let me discuss the coach triangle boundaries with you. So let me explain this is the right atrium that we have cut open and this is the right ventricle. Between the atrium and the ventricle we can see the AV valve over here. This valve is having the leaflet. Particularly this leaflet is present along the septum. So this is the septal leaflet of the AV valve. And this is the opening of the coronary sinus. So if we draw, this is the septal leaflet of AV valve. This is the coronary sinus. And this is the tendon of Todero. What is tendon of Todero? It is subendocardial ridge. So these three are the boundaries of coach triangle. But why this is important for us? This is important because this is the place where AV node is present. Okay, so tendon of Todero is the boundary, septal leaflet and the orifice is the boundary, but D is the answer over here. Next question, most dependent part of the lung in the supine position. Answer will be lower apical. Here, the uh, important concept is to remember the position, most dependent part of the lung in supine as well as erect position because if there is any aspiration the pneumonia will settle in that particular lobe only okay so if i draw explain in the supine position there are two answers possible lower apical and the other answer is posterior upper but the lower apical will be better answer even the other is given like posterior of uh, upper right upper posterior or posterior of upper lobe even if this choice is given, answer will be still lower apical because that is a better answer. But in the erect position, straight forward, in the erect position, straight forward segment, posterior basal segment is the one which gets involved. Okay, like this. Next question, all are inserted into the first rib except scalenus anterior, posterior, medius and suprapleural membrane. Let me tell you, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about this, uh, scalenus muscle we know that scalenus anterior posterior and the medius is there but also there is one more scalenus what is that uh, suprapleural membrane which is also called as Simpson's fascia it does contain remnant of a muscle called scalenus minimus it does contain remnants of a muscle called scalenus minimus and this scalenus minimus along with the other scalene are inserted into the first rib except one the scalenus posterior which is inserted onto the second rib okay so rest all scalene will be inserted onto the first rib next question structure passing through the aortic hiatus are all except now aortic hiatus we have the mnemonic ata this structure will pass a4 aorta t4 thoracic duct next a4 azygous vein sympathetic trunk will be the answer over here now sympathetic trunk will pass from where it will be passing behind the medial arcuate ligament okay next question is left superior intercostal vein will drain into what now left and right side we have both uh, both sides superior intercostal vein formation but uh, left side there is a difference in the drainage let me show you the second third and fourth vein they will become superior intercostal on both side right side drains into agigas left side will drain into left brachiocephalic vein so that is why answer to this question will be left brachiocephalic vein. Next question is fossa ovalis closes because of fusion of what? See when the atrium is developing like this, we have common atrial and common ventricular chamber. We have fused AV cushion. So what we have learned over here that when this is all developing, there is a endocardial cushion present, septum primum present, septum secundum comes and in between the septum secundum and primum we have the foramen ovale. This all develops when there is, uh, this all develops when there is a formation of the interatrial septum. Between the two we have foramen ovale which will persist as fossa ovalis. That's why answer will be C, septum primum plus septum secundum. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फुट ड्रॉप रिजल्ट इज एन इंजरी टू डीप पेरोनियल नर्व इट इज अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन बिकॉज कंसिडर दिस इज लेग एंड दिस इज फुट इफ द पेशेंट इज अनेबल टू डू द डोसी फ्लेक्शन दैट मीन्स फुट इज ड्रॉप and this action was supposed to be done by the anterior compartment of leg which is supplied by deep peroneal nerve if it is not given we can also mark common peroneal nerve but specific answer should be deep peroneal nerve strongest ligament in the body it's a factual question we need to remember this iliofemoral ligament is straight forward answer now oblique popliteal ligament is continuation of what let me first show you this diagram that when the semi membranosus it comes for the insertion in the popliteal fossa it gives two extensions one is the oblique popliteal ligament which is the question and the other is the fascia covering the popliteus muscle and interestingly both of these extensions are making the floor in the popliteal fossa so oblique popliteal ligament is an extension of what semi membranosus muscle semi membranosus muscle so here answer will be b muscle inserted into iliotibial tract are actually two tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus let me show you the diagram and here you are what you can see that uh, this is the iliotibial tract over here which is receiving gluteus maximus and also tensor fascia lata right i hope everything was fine dear students thank you so much and god bless you all all the very best